Open up your Bibles. Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Oh, I'm so excited. We're going to see miracles today. We're going to see healing today. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 12, beginning verse 1, it says, Now the Lord said, had said to Abram, Get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to the land which I will show you. Tell your neighbor, come on out. Verse 2, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Say, in me, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Amen. Amen. I, I uh, remember, a, I have a friend of mine who has a ministry in Mexico, and uh, one of his churches is in the city dumps there. Literally, it's, the, it's where they, they take all the trash, but there's families that live in that area, and they, they go through the trash, and they get, and they recycle stuff, and they make money that way. And so, uh, of course, it's very poor, and my friend goes over there and ministers, and there's people that, that, that got a part of his church, and, and God gave him the ability. He had a missions in another land, uh, maybe a, a few miles away from that area, and he had built these little cottages, these little uh, houses in the back of uh, the mission. And so in there, they had, you know, a nice area for a living room, had a kitchen, had bedroom, bathroom, just normal. And so he, uh, there was a family there in the, in the, the dumps, and he pulled them out of there and he says, listen, I want to bless you all with a new house. And so he took the family and they, they, he blessed them with one of the new cottages that they built. The family was overwhelmed. They were just so blessed. This, they've never been in a place like that. And so there they are living in this, in this new cottage. And then when it came time for them to eat dinner, they went outside and they dug a hole. Started a fire. And then the, the food, they cooked their food, but then they left it out and it ended up spoiling. And then in the house, they didn't know how to use, when they, when, they, when they turned on the water for the shower, they had never seen that before. And everything that was in the house that was normal to the way we live was abnormal to them. As a matter of fact, they ended up destroying the house by the way they were living. Even though they moved out of their condition, their condition hadn't been moved out of them. And so it didn't matter if they were in a nice house or in the slums or, or wherever they were. They had a way of living that they were taking that way of living wherever they went. Now the Bible says that when we come to Christ, we're new creations. We're born again. We're a brand new man. We are new in Christ. And being birthed again, born again in Christ... Excuse me. It's not so that we can live the way we lived before. There's a new way that we're supposed to live. The old way lived by the sensual lust of the flesh. But the new way we live by faith in God. So the word of God says we walk by faith and not by sight. Tell your neighbor, I walk by faith and not by sight. Tell the person behind you, walk by faith and not by sight. And so we walk by faith and not by sight. So the, the, the old ways of living and the old ways of thinking need to change. Because if we try to live this new life in Christ according to the old ways that we live, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. The old ways of living, you know, we, we, we had what we had, but if we want more, we got to take it, take it away from somebody. The old, the old ways of thinking is that the only way up is to push somebody down. The old ways of, of living is, is there's not enough, so you better hold on to what you got and get from someone else. But that's a lie. The old ways of living, there's not enough, not enough time, not enough energy, not enough, not enough money. But that's a lie. 
if we are looking with our eyes, then yes, we will accept that and we'll live in the, in the fear of not enough. But when we walk by faith, we begin to see the riches of the glory of God. That there's more than enough. There's more than enough to bless everyone in this world. And so when we turn our perspective from instead of looking at us and our strength, and we begin to look at God and his strength, the limits come off of our life. It's why Paul, he said, and my God shall supply all your needs according to what you have in the bank, how strong you, your, your, your job is, your salary. No, according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. And so there's no limits to your life anymore. The only limits in your life are the limits that you place upon yourself. And that's why I always like to, to remind you about your worst enemy. How I many you know what the worst enemy in the world is? Or the, the worst weapon in the world? The most destructive weapon in the world. How I many you know what the most destructive weapon in the world is? It's not your tongue and it's not yourself. It's a mirror. Because nobody goes to the mirror to see what's right with them. They always go in the mirror to find out what's wrong with them. That's why I always love to, to advise all the young men, before you get married, make sure you know what your wife looks like without makeup. <clears throat> because after you get married, the next day you will wake up and say, there's a stranger in the house. Trust me, if your wife takes, if your girlfriend takes longer than five minutes to get ready, she got some major construction going on. She, she invests thousands of dollars in specialized products. That's why, I, I, that's why women never go to the bathroom by themselves. Because they need, they need their stylists. They need their makeup artists. They need all their helpers to help them. Because when they go to the restroom, it's like a whole production line. Fixing the clothes, fixing the hair. You know, that's why, you know, Pastor Pete and me, you know, I'm ready to go. That's it, I'm ready to go. One minute, you know, I, I spent one minute, I spent 30 seconds, me getting ready, and then I spent 30 minutes waiting for her. And I have two girls, so when I think I got one ready to go, then the other one, I have to wait another 30 minutes. And then the other one, and if they don't find the right stuff, the right makeup, the right clothes, we are not leaving the house. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Truth hurts. Truth hurts. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so when we are looking in the mirror and only seeing ourselves, we will never be a blessing unto others because we have too many problems ourselves. And so the enemy puts this boundary upon us. It's like a, it's like a gate or, or uh, a wall that we see, well, there's no way I can be a blessing because I don't have. There's no way I can be a giver because I need to receive. There's no way I can sow a seed because I need a harvest. There's no way I can help others because I need help myself. But if we will turn our perspective and stop looking at ourselves. Stop looking at what you do not have and start looking at others and begin to pull from the resource of heaven to provide for their needs. 
you will see that not only will God bless you, but he'll make you a blessing. Tell your neighbor, God's going to make you a blessing. <laughs> Say, God's going to make me a blessing. Now, when my, my children were smaller, I would tell them, sit down. And they would go running. And I would say, Glory, stop. Sit down. And she would look at me. And she might take one step to the chair. But then she'd get distracted and take off running the other way. I know none of your kids are like that. I'm just talking about mine. She's 16 years old. This was yesterday. <laughs> But then, after a while, if they didn't listen to me, I would say, glory, and I would grab her. And then I would lift her, because I could lift her. And then I would put her on the chair and sit her on the chair. And I would say, don't get up. What did I do? I made her sit down. I want to tell you that God's word says that he's going to make you a blessing. He's making you into a blessing. Why would God make you into a blessing? Because God sees the struggles of life and the pains that are in this world. And so he uses a person like you and like me who know their God to pull down the blessings of heaven so that the world can receive the blessings of the Lord. If they don't know God, they need someone that has connection with God to tell them about God. That's why healing, God anoints your hands to heal. To go and heal those that don't know him. Heal the sick. Bring salvation to them. The Lord loves the world. God loves the world. And he doesn't want anybody to suffer. He doesn't want anybody. But because of man's ways... It's not that they, they reject God. They just don't know God. But we know God. Amen. Hallelujah. You know God. And how are they going to know God? When you begin to step out and say, God, make me a blessing. And I'll be a blessing to them. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say there's more than enough. Say there's more than enough. There's more than enough. It's like the land that needs water so that the seeds in the land could grow are over there. And the water is over here. And there needs to be something that will bring the water from there to water the land over here. We are the one that are supposed to be used by God to receive. Matter of fact, Jesus says, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. We are the ones to connect ourselves to God, to receive the healing power of God so that this land can be healed again. It's through our relationship with God. And I want to tell you people, God, God called you for purpose. God called you for destiny. There's a plan and purpose for your life, and you're going to be used to change the world. Close to five years ago, I woke up one morning with a word from the Lord. The Lord said, go. I didn't know where I was going, but the Lord said, go. And then I looked at my phone and I got an invitation to go to India. So I told the minister, I'm going to India. I've never been to India, never been out of the United States other than Mexico. And I showed up in a land where they don't speak your language, in a land where 99 0.9% of the people are Hindu in a land where I am, I look so different than the people with no provision and no luggage, no nothing, but the Lord provided for my needs. God doesn't wait for you to have things for you to go. He doesn't wait for you to change your, your situation for you to be used by God. The only resource that you need to serve God is the love of God in your heart. I remember hearing a story of a, of a woman, uh, Mother Teresa. She stood before the whole United Nations and 
they were honoring her for her life of giving, how she, she took care of the, the poor and she cleansed the leper and she showed the love of God to people all over the world. And she stood before all the leaders of the, of the nations. As they gave her this award to recognize her life of service, she looked at the, at the leaders, every president, every governor, every diplomat, and she said, if you don't want the orphan children, give them to me, I will take care of them. She said, if you don't want the homeless, give them to me, I'll take care of them. Hallelujah. What was she doing? She didn't have money, but she's never had money. She didn't have space for them, but she never had space for them. Here's a woman who didn't have anything, but yet she was somehow able to be a blessing to millions of people all over the world. She began to pull off of the resources of heaven. And I've seen that in my life where God supernaturally provides. As long as you're looking at yourself, you'll never see the supernatural provision of God. But if you will begin to put purpose to your life and say, I'm going to be a blessing, watch how the supernatural provision will come upon your life. Why should God bless you? Just because you look good? Just because you came to church and you, you sang a little louder? No. God will bless you to be a blessing. Put yourself in position to be a blessing. I've been, I've been seeing how real this is. I've been talking to people about this new understanding of, of perspective of seeing myself. For myself, it's very difficult for me to go ask for help. It's very difficult if I had a need at home, maybe I need to pay the light bill or, or needed money for food. It'd be very difficult for me to go to somebody who might have and just say, could you help me? It's just very difficult. There's something in me that makes it very difficult. But when somebody else has a need, it's very easy for me to go to somebody else and help them to help my brother. There is a strength and anointing to connect you to be a blessing to others. Put that cap on there. It's very easy for me to take and to give. But for me to take and keep, can't. Why? Because my heart won't let me. But, but it's very easy for me to receive and to give. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you good measured, pressed down, shaken together and running over shall man give unto your bosom. When you begin to step into the life of being a giver, being a blessing, letting God make you into a blessing. He will make sure that others will come and be a blessing unto you. You will lack no good thing. And so put yourself in the position of being a blessing. Be a part of the preaching of the gospel. Where do you start? Start with your tithes and your offerings. Go there, Malachi chapter three. Go and open that up again. Let me drink some more. Thank you. Thank you. Malachi chapter 3, verse, verse 10. Now, this is not a suggestion. This is God speaking to his people. It says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. You 
You know, uh, when I was in Africa, I was so happy in Africa because I didn't watch any news. You turn on the news and the whole world is burning. Why, why, why are so many politicians quick to, to blame our, our Mexican brothers from coming into the United States? Because they think there's not enough. They're taking our jobs, they're taking our money, they're taking our health care. They're, they're taking. That's a lie from hell. Even if you put the numbers to it, they're giving, they're giving, they're giving. We got a, such a deficit of workers in the, in the workplace in the United States and got more people retiring. You need, you need I, think, I believe, 15 workers per person retiring to sustain the social system here. But we have a deficit because we killed so many kids over the past couple of years that should be working today, but they would kill them in, the, in abortion. And the only reason that our system works is because people from other countries will come and help us in the places where we are weak. I don't want to go into politics. Amen. But when we put ourselves to be used by God, the windows of heaven will open up. And there's going to be a blessing that's going to come upon your life. And because of that blessing, you're going to be so blessed that you're going to be a blessing to others. God giving you divine, you know, supernatural ideas. Favor God upon your life. You know, if, if, you will, if you will get your life right in your area of your giving, you won't have to work things through. God will work things through for you. Sometimes we just got to have simple faith. How am I going to be blessed? Sow a seed. Then what do I do? Thank God for the harvest. Always trying to make things happen. Why don't you just use your faith that God will make things happen? Do you know how the baby grows in the womb of his mother? How the bones are produced and how they grow in the wounds of the mother and everything is in its perfect location? Do we know how the, how the seed grows in the ground? Can, can we go to the seed and, 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 do, and will it to grow? Matter of fact, the, the less you touch it, the better it'll grow. Can't we just have simple faith in God when he says, as long as the earth exists, seed time and harvest shall always be? Can't we just have faith in God that his word says that when you honor God with your tithes and offerings, that he will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon your life that there's more, that you will not have room enough to receive it? When I lay hands on the sick, all I am, all I have is hands. But Jesus comes upon these hands and releases healing upon the sick. I can't heal a cockroach, but Jesus in my life heals the world. Tell your neighbor, simple. Just honor God. Trust God. Put yourself in a position to be a blessing. We got to start using our faith more and more and more. Amen? I mean, I'm, I, I'm already seeing our, this church. We got some empty space over there and behind us. And I, I believe we have enough chairs to fill all that empty space. So Pete, next week, just put all the chairs out. We're just gonna use our faith. <laughs> I, I can't preach anymore. I can't preach any harder than what I'm already at. I'm just gonna keep on doing what I'm doing, right? But God is the one that's gonna bring in the increase. So let's just put them all out, amen? I believe we're gonna see a time where we're gonna see people just sitting on the floor, all along the wall. And, and, and nobody's gonna to wanna to leave because God is here. Amen, I believe we're gonna see that, amen? Amen, so we're gonna use our faith, amen? Why, because our brothers need to grow with us, amen? Because you guys, are, you guys are all blessings, amen? And so we need more blessings hearing the word of God and becoming a greater blessing in Jesus' name, amen? Hallelujah. Honor God and watch how God will honor you. 
Be a blessing and watch how God will make you into a blessing so that you'll bless others. Amen. You can never outgive God. I've yet to meet someone that says, you know what? I went broke. I gave all my money to God and I'm broke. I've never met that person. I've never met a person who chose to honor God that didn't have a smile on their face and was so excited about what God was doing in their life and God was getting ready to do in their life. Amen. The Lord is faithful. He is faithful. And understand this, you're not giving money to Kevin. You're giving money to Jesus. Amen. That way, whenever God speaks to you about giving in one way or another, you never look at the person and say, oh, you know, this person disappointed me because they didn't do that. No, 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 no. You're not giving to me. You're giving to Jesus. I can't supply any of your needs, but God can supply all your needs. Amen. I am just a man like you, filled with the Holy Spirit, being used by God. Amen. The same blessings that the Lord blesses me is the same blessings he'll bless you. Amen. This is the way I live, and this is the way I encourage every one of you to live. Amen. And you will lack no good thing. Tell your neighbor, I'm not going to lack any good thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Do you all receive that word today? Can we give God praise?